Okay, well, there is water coming in from here. It's coming from the floor, from the wall. So that pipe. It's probably busted someplace outside. Yeah, outside the wall. In the toilet, like, so it will um, flush now. Hi everybody. So if you're a homeowner, or even if you're not, you are going to have days like this. So what happened was, um, a day or so ago, we had a little bit of water under our washing machine on the floor in our basement. And we've had this happen before where the washing machine had a part go out and it started leaking water on the ground, or on the floor. So I just thought that's what it was and I was going to get to it the next morning. Well, the next morning I had got called into work and as I was at work, my wife called me and said that there was water running in to the basement. And we found out that we had sewage backed up into this pipe. That meant water was backing up and was getting out of the pipe and it was running down into our basement somehow. So I came home from work and we dug all this up last night and found our problem, which I'm not going to move it right now but in this pipe here this is a real thin pipe and it had a crack in it where roots had gotten into it and caused a root mass in it and that had caused our backup so we're in the process of digging more of this out because i want to replace all the piping to that stand pipe and then all the piping here back to as far back as we can get so that we have all fresh pipe there hopefully no more issues this is one of those projects where it's a lot more fun watching somebody else do something like this than have to do it yourself in the meantime as we were digging this out we actually hit our propane line so we have to replace a uh, propane line as well or at least splice it together So we're getting close to the standpipe here and uh, we hit a wire to our water pump. So we had to shut that breaker off so we don't get electrocuted. So this is what we got so far. So we dug all the way to the edge of the house and um, what we found was there's a steel piece here that come through the wall of the basement and is rusted away. So that Franco rubber fitting is supposed to be attached to it. Still is, looks like attached, but there's a big hole in the top. So that's where the water was coming out of and then leaching down into tile and into the basement. I'm thinking the only way that I can fix that is to somehow get that steel out of there. Maybe using a torch or maybe it'll just it's chisel and a hammer. Maybe it'll bust out. I don't want to destroy the wall. And then if I can get that out of there, then I'm going to hopefully maybe be able to slide a four inch schedule 40 pipe in there to replace that. Um, I don't know what else to do. That's going to be a mess. So we'll see what we come up with. And we are in the process of trying to hook this. This is the line to our water pump. We hit it a little while ago when we were digging and we need to get it going so we can do things like get lunch around and drinks and things like that. So I'm trying to come up with a plan here to splice this back together. Gonna use some butt connectors. I don't know if that's the right way to do it or not, but that's the way I'm doing it. I'm not a certified electrician, so I'm not saying this is the way to do it, but this is just the way I'm doing it. So I thought I would show you. I 
All right, so I'm going to cut into this pipe and there's a couple more root masses that I could see through the um, spots where we broke through the pipe. So I'm gonna cut those out, get those out so we can temporarily make sure water can flow through here and we don't have more root masses moving down the line. Look at that. Look at that. How was he, how in the world yeah. was we even be able to move any water through there? So there's one there. This is just so we can get this dirt out of here. Because we don't want it to go down the pipe. Okay, one more spot. <laughs> Well, not everything is negative about having to dig up your yard and get to buy new tools. That made quick work of it from both ends. Yeah. There you go. Oh, it's the inside pipe in. Yes, it is. Oh, okay. 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 okay, so I think we're going to have to lift that one up to get it in. You want to clean this off real quick? Sure. Man, as tight as it is. Although, I did not. That fits way better. Yeah, that'll work though. Tighten this fern co up, and we're ready to go. So that's what we got so far today, or actually over the last couple of days, we finally got this new piping in, but I feel like we should go at least another pipe length back here because I'm not completely convinced that it is clear of roots. So I think we're going to try to dig back another 10 feet today and get one more length of pipe in before we start covering this up. Okay, let's see how this lays in here. I want you to put your foot behind this pipe. You want to smack it. You ready? Yeah. Right against it. Okay. 
Ready? That's not what we wanted. That's what I was kind of afraid of. I don't have a good blade for this. So, I'm just gonna have to use the hacksaw because I'm not gonna tear the crap out of it. Now I'm out of room. I'm gonna just switch blades here and use a short blade. I have one that's like a hacksaw blade. It's just super, super short, but it might work. We're going to have to lift it down that way and then bring it back this way. Lift it up into the corner like you were, Layla. Lift it more. There, there. You Grab a hold, like, yank it this way. Yeah, keep doing that. I think you did it. Now we're about at the corner of the house. Yeah, you can start walking tools over. I want to leave a shovel here, but everything else can probably go. Well, that was a lot of work. I still have to cement around that pipe into the wall there, which I'll be doing probably tomorrow. All right, hopefully today is the last major day of working on this project. Today, what we need to accomplish is to check the slope on this pipe to make sure that it's all at least a quarter inch every foot of slope so that the sewage runs like it should. Then we also need to cement around the pipe on both inside and outside. And then we're gonna start carefully covering up the rest of the pipe. And after we fill in some of this hole, then we're going to reattach the gas line. All right, we got the pipe pretty much supported underneath it with some crumbled dirt. So it's all supported at the right slope. And now I gotta make a form to go on the inside and the outside of this pipe so I can cement around it without losing it all. This bucket here is a little bit bigger than eight inches around. And this is the size of pipe I'm gonna put the, the form around. What I'm gonna try to do is make a piece that comes around the, the bottom of the pipe on the inside and the outside that at least holds the bottom half of the cement in. So I'm gonna start with the outside and I'm gonna try to cut two pieces out of one, one uh, form here. So this is gonna be the outside diameter. And then set this right in the middle. This should make it work around the pipe because it's a four inch pipe. So I should be able to cut the inside out and then the outside out and have a form. Cut it in half, have two forms, one for the inside and one for the outside. So down in the basement, there's a rubber fern coat that I have to leave space for. So I'm gonna leave a little bit of space there. My thinking is I'm going to shove this up against the wall and put a strap around the pipe and the wood to hold it up in there and against the wall. There we go. On this side, I'm not gonna be able to get very close because the cement is not even at the bottom, sticking way out. And I don't wanna have to go chip any of that out. I already got this pipe in and everything. But this will just stop it from continuously running out. And it's okay if it sticks out past the wall here. So it'll help contain some of that cement. And then it let me build it up and fill all that in. The inside should be a lot better. I was gonna put a strap around that to hold it, but I don't think that's gonna move too much. So I'm not gonna put a strap on this one. 
So yeah, we gotta fill in all around this pipe. So we're gonna try to put this form like that to hold some of that cement in as I put it in at the top. So we're gonna strap that on. That'll stop a lot of the escaping. This cement I think is a 20 to 40 minute set time. I'm gonna kinda try to mix it a little runny if I can. I think it'll fill in better on that pipe. A little more runny than I wanted it. Okay, we're gonna go in the inside and work on some of that and then come back out and put some more stiffer stuff on top of this stuff. We decided to thicken up our cement because it was so runny it wasn't, it was hard to keep it in the hole so we're gonna pack it with some more solid cement. Definitely use more of a sand based cement or mortar. I had to do this over again. It ain't pretty, but we got there. I definitely wouldn't use regular cement like for setting posts or things like that with the larger rocks in them. This had just, you know, pea sized rocks, but made it really difficult. I would have used more of a sand based mortar or a cement. They're quite the cleanup later on the floor. Today I'm going to be showing you how to splice a propane line together using flare fittings. As you can see, we have quite the project going out here. We had a septic line get roots in it, so we had to dig it all up. In the process, our gas line that went right through here got tore up. So today, I got to take the end of this line and attach it to this end over here before we finish burying this the rest of the way. So I'm going to show you how I do it. I'm not a professional or anything, but I thought it might help you out. You have to use a specific tool for cutting pipe. This tool is used to cut copper, aluminum, and maybe some other types of piping. How it works is it's clamped onto the line and you tighten it a little bit and rotate it a few times. And you just continue that process until it actually cuts the whole line off. Each time I'm just barely tightening it and it slowly makes its way through the pipe. Now you can just take your tool and deburr the middle of it. For the next step, you'll have to have a tool similar to this. I got mine, I believe, at an auto parts store because it can be used for brake lines as well and other types of lines. And this is the other piece to that. So these work in concert together to put the flare on the pipe. These are the fittings I'm using and how they work is the nut will slide onto the pipe and then once I flare the pipe, the nut will pull that flare onto this fitting and then tighten down. We'll do that to both sides, the new pipe and the old pipe. So I have to get this one nut on the pipe before I start my flaring process or else I won't be able to get it on. It's an easy thing to forget. So then I find the right size, which is right here. This loosens up and it slides over the pipe. And then you wanna leave about a 16th to an eighth of an inch above the surface of this flare tool. And then you tighten it back down. And then you take this tool 
and this is what actually does the flaring. flare I got my nut on I'm ready to connect these two pieces together before I do that I'm gonna turn my gas on and just blow out this line in case there's any chips or anything any dirt so all the air movement down there the line should be cleaned out now all right now I'm just gonna work on this line to try to make it nice and straight and then We'll be checking for leaks at the fittings. All right, I got the line flattened out in the trench there that I dug. This line is probably 18 inches below the actual surface of the ground. Now I'm gonna turn the gas on and smell for any gas leaks. I definitely hear one down here, smell it. So we'll have to work on that a little bit more. Yep, it's right at the fitting. Okay, I had to tighten this fitting up pretty hard. And I still think it's leaking a little bit. If I spray some soapy water on that. Still getting some bubbling. Right there. This fitting was leaking, so I put a lot bigger flare on this. We'll see how it does. All right, I checked both ends where the fittings were at, and I got rid of all the leaks. I had a problem down at that end. I reflared it, made the flare bigger. I think that helped, but I still really had to crank down on the, the nut and the fitting to tighten it up and get rid of it. But I think we're all good now. So I'm gonna start filling this in with some dirt and covering this up. Hope you got something out of this video. Good luck with all your projects.